Hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode of Fishing with Alex. Hobby just announced their brand new Hobby Outback for 2019 and they also announced the new Hobby Compass Camo that one includes the 180 drive. Now, with these two kayaks, one being considerably cheaper than the other, a lot of you are asking yourself which one should I get? Should I get the Hobby Compass or should I get the Hobby Outback? And this video is to help you answer that question. In this channel we do kayak videos, fishing and gear review videos. So if you like that and you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into this. So let's start this comparison with the main point here which is the drive system. The Compass used to have the old style Hobby Mirage drive system that didn't have reverse and that was a lot of, that was the deal breaker for a lot of people including myself. So now they have added that drive system kind of like makes it a fair fight with the Outback or does it? Let's get into it. The Hobby Compass Camo includes the 2017 Hobby Mirage Drive 180 with a non-arc system. That means it has the old style setting system where if you want the cranks closer to you or far away from you, you're gonna have to just push this thing like this and move it, right? Well, the Hobby Outback for 2019 includes the MD-180 drive with the R-crank system. It also includes the two roofings. A standard. Great point. So right there, the edge go to the Outback. Right off the bat, the Outback is ahead of this game. Now, let's talk about the seat. One of the main issues, other than not having the reverse system on the compass, is the seat. A lot of people have complained about it. A lot of people didn't like the compass seat, they said that it was cheap, they said that it would break. I didn't have any of those issues, but the main issue that I had with it was no adjustment whatsoever, right? A lot of people like to adjust their thing, they like it lower, higher, whatever. You don't have the option to do that, you don't have the option to fix it. The only thing you had is bring it further back or forward. The backrest, not, not the seat itself, which it was a problem. And they didn't fix that with the compass camo, they didn't upgrade the seat, while the Outback. The Outback, they put in an even better seat. This Vantage CTWC is not only an inch and a half wider, but it also has a multiple adjustment points and seating level positions. Like you can see, put it low, middle, and high. So if you like to adjust your seat and you want a more comfortable seat, there's no question about it. The seat from the Outback is a better show than the Compass. I remember um, fishing on my Revo and the seat being so narrow, it was an issue. So I'm glad that Hobby took a step and fixed that issue of having a too narrow of a seat with a brand new seat for the Outback for 2019. Now let's talk about rigging a power pole or maybe adding a torpedo or a Bisbee to your boat or a Minn Kota motor. You could do it with the Compass. You have the power pole plate that you could add to your Compass so it makes it easier to add your power pole system to your boat. But it's, that is something extra that you have to buy. So you see, there's a pattern here. You could get the base level compass with almost nothing on it and you need to pay money to add stuff to it. On the other hand, you could get the Outback that has all the stuff included plus more. But that's not enough to make a decision. The Outback includes four quarter inch 20 insert which makes it super easy to rig up your boat with something like an easy mount. By the way guys, if you want to find an easy way to rig up a Torquedo or a Bisbee or a Minn Kota motor on your hobby kayak, make sure to go to easymountusa.com and use my coupon code which I'm gonna put in here and in the description. I think it's alias to save some money. This is the main point here. Like with the hobby Outback, you get all this stuff included. With a compass, yes, you could have it but it's an additional cost so at the end of the day if you start adding stuff from the outback to the compass you're just gonna spend more money and actually you may even spend more money than you would if you just get the outback now let's talk about accessories and rigging and all the stuff the hobby compass has two flush mount rod holders and two gear tracks in the front and that's about it it might have other stuff but mainly that's what it has in the other hand the hobby outback has a front hatch that you could close you could get one of those liners and put your cash in there with uh, eyes and stuff like that. It has rigging paradise, seriously. Let me just go over them. It has, in the front of the boat, it has 2D locks, Hobie tracks, right there, built in. And towards the middle of the boat, in the front, it has 2H rail. And if you look at it closely, it has the gear track inserts. So not only you could put your accessories on the Hobie H rail, but you could just, if you have gear track accessories, you could just drop it in and you have two mounting positions. This is crazy. That is an awesome idea, by the way. Those H-Track Deluxe system, it has places to drop in your knife, your pliers. It also has an integrated 
bungee retractable system. For example, let's say you like to have your fish grip with you. Maybe you just clip it to it, get the fish, clip the fish, put it on the water, and that thing just retain it for you. Easy as that. Could come very handy sometimes. So now on the rear of the Outback, you get two more age track the loss system. And the way they built it, they put a bungee cable right there. So that way, if you have a bigger side cooler and you want to put it this way instead of this way, you could do so because it's not blocking you. So they expanded the tank well to be able to accommodate more stuff. Like, seriously, that was genius. This is why I like this boat so much because it has so many things that you could do with it. It's crazy. Now, the Hobby Compass comes Lawrence ready. You could rig up your fish finder easy. Well, the Outback has a new Hobby Guardian. Having that Hobby Guardian, that's a huge plus. That thing, if it's gonna hit something, it just push in. So you're gonna be able to protect your transducer, your very special transducer while you're on the water. Now, let's talk about other things that the Hobby Outback has and the Compass doesn't. It has a PA style rear handle and the awesome thing about that is that you could use the H rail accessories and maybe put a flag on the back. It also comes, which is unique to it, with the Hobby Outback uploaded. That little plastic thing, you could just put it on the bottom of the boat and lift the boat up. And it makes it easier to put your boat on top of your car if you're car topping. And if you want to bring it down, it also makes it easier. Especially if you have a truck, you could just put that thing in there, bring it down, hold it down, and boom, bring the whole boat down without killing yourself. And um, yeah, the compass doesn't, doesn't have any of those things. It just has crickets. But that's not all. That's not all that you should consider. Let's talk about two main points where the compass destroyed the Hobby Outback. And that is weight. It weighs on average about 16 to 17 pounds less than the Outback. So if weight is a concern to you, maybe you want to go with the compass. Another thing is cost. See, the cheapest Hobby Outback is $2,800. The Compass with the 180 drive is $2,300. So right there, there you're saving $500 by just going with the Compass version. Those are the two main selling points that the Compass has over the Hobby Outback. For example, if you just need a second kayak in case you need to take somebody with you, why would you go with an Outback? You could just have a Compass if you already have an Outback. So the, the Compass is a really versatile kayak that fix a lot of the check marks, right? But it doesn't go all the way. Um, I give you two reasons why maybe you should consider that one over the Alva, but if money is not a concern and weight of the boat is not a concern to you, there's really no reason why you should get a compass unless you just love the design. But anyways, that's my opinion on this subject. I leave it up to you. Make sure you comment down below, tell me which one you're gonna get and let me know if you have any other video ideas that you want me to do.